samurai warrior. A weapon of mythical strength and lethal effectiveness. But each unique samurai sword is also an artifact. A crystallized piece of Japanese history and culture. Frozen forever. Captured in steel. Why has the samurai sword always been such a powerful symbol of Japanese culture? Well, the man pictured on this 5,000 yen note tried to answer that question for the world. His name was Dr. Inazuni Tobe, a Japanese diplomat at the League of Nations. He was asked by a Western colleague how, without religious instruction, the Japanese could teach their children right from wrong. So, in the year 1900, Dr. Nitobe wrote a book in English called Bushido, The Code of the Samurai. He wrote that this warrior code became the credo by which most Japanese lived their lives. And he wrote, just as the code of the samurai is the soul of Japan, the sword is the soul of the samurai. For Dr. Nitobe, the sword is a work of art that represents the soul of the samurai. But originally, the sword was not the samurai's weapon of choice. In the beginning, they fought from horseback, and their skill was with the bow and arrow. They lived by a code called Cuba no Michi, the way of the horse and the bow. So why did the sword, not the bow and arrow, become so important to the samurai and to Japan? To find the answer, we must go deep into the history and legends of this ancient land. The origins of this fierce warrior class, the samurai, are to be found at the very beginning of Japanese history. These mounted warriors galloped into history during the reign of the Emperor Tenmu, who built his capital in Nara, modeled after the ancient Chinese capital of Chang'an. Emperor Tenmu's army of peasants, armed with crossbows, was failing to subdue the mobile cavalry of the unruly tribes of the north. Tribes which may have included the Ainu, the indigenous peoples of Japan. And so, Emperor Tenmu made a fateful decision. He dissolved his ineffective national army. Instead, he ordered local chieftains to create bands of elite mounted warriors to enforce his authority in rural areas and to challenge the northern tribes. These were the first samurai. The word samurai means to serve, and this is how they began, as warriors serving the emperor.
While the imperial court prayed to the gods for their success, the mounted warriors rode out to hunt down the proud barbarians of the north, once and for all. But the tribesmen were crafty fighters, adept at ambush. The warriors often had to forsake their bows and fight with their straight Chinese swords. Swords which in the heat of battle, chopping downward from horseback, often snapped in two. The samurai needed better swords. According to legend, a swordsmith named Amakuni rose to the challenge. One day, standing in his doorway, Amakuni noticed that the warriors returning from battle were carrying broken swords, ones that he had forged. The emperor himself passed by and frowned at the disgraced smith. Amakuni's problem was the classic problem of swordsmiths all over the world. How do you make a sword that is very sharp, but also tough enough not to break? When working with steel, a swordsmith must control three things. The rate of cooling, the carbon content, and the elimination of impurities. If he cools red-hot metal too quickly, it becomes hard enough to sharpen to a fine edge, but also very brittle, liable to snap in two. If he cools the metal too slowly, the sword will be very tough and flexible, but won't take a sharp edge. Likewise, if he adds too much carbon, the steel will be brittle, and if not enough, too soft. Amakuni experimented until he developed the techniques to solve these problems. He selected the finest iron ore and carefully refined it, adding just the proper amount of carbon to the steel. He then broke the iron block and reassembled the pieces like a puzzle to make another block to further purify the metal. The block was then folded and hammered out over and over to distribute the carbon evenly and to eliminate impurities that might create weak spots in the finished sword. Next, he lengthened the block into a blade and gave the sword a curve to make it slice more effectively on the downward stroke from horseback. What he did next is one of the secrets of the samurai sword. He covered the body of the sword with clay and left only the edge exposed. He then plunged the hot blade into water. The unprotected edge cooled quickly, becoming very hard so it could be sharpened to a fine edge, while the clay covering it allowed the body of the blade to cool more slowly and remain softer and more flexible, less brittle. This produced a distinctive wavy pattern along the cutting edge, called a hamon, the mark of a true handcrafted samurai sword. When the warriors returned from battle the following year, the emperor stopped to tell the smith, you are a master sword maker, none of your swords have failed. These early curved swords were called tachi, and were worn edge downward from the belt. Armed with these swords, the samurai increased in power and in pride. From the 12th century onwards, samurai began to serve samurai lords and no other. <laughs>